Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you a different approach to home streaming. So home streaming is, for example, this gaming PC here would be playing a Steam game, but I can turn on another less powerful PC or laptop and I can stream it from here onto that PC or laptop, or you can even get something like a Steam Link and then you can stream it over to another TV in the house. And it works because it's using all the power, the game's still being played on the PC here, it's just streaming, it's just mirroring that image over onto a different device. The problem with it is, is often you need a very good connection and even then you will still get a certain amount of lag, so it's not brilliant. It's good, but it's not brilliant. Xbox do a very similar thing with the Xbox One Windows 10 app, and also PS4 does a similar thing with the remote play. But in this video today, I'm going to show you a different approach, and it works really well as long as you're nearby your source. So for example, in your house, if you have your source here, then as long as you're within so many meters, so for example, maybe within around 10 meters of the device, then you're gonna be able to play it. And this is the main thing with zero lag. So what we're using is a monitor and we're using wireless HDMI. Now, you guys, if you subscribe to me, will have already seen this many times in my other videos. This was the PlayStation 4 U and also the Xbox One U. It will work on absolutely any HDMI device, so you just need to plug it in and it's gonna work. Now, a lot of people have been talking about the links and stuff, you know, can you please provide the links? So I'm just gonna quickly show you what they are in the video so you can look them up yourself. Now, how this works is it's really straightforward. Let me just show you. All we've got is our PC here set up like normal, and then we've got it going into a HDMI splitter, so this has one input in and then it just mirrors two outputs so basically whatever comes in on here is going to work on this white cable here and also this one here now with this one all this is is wireless hdmi so this is the sender and then the receiver i've built into here you don't have to build it in you can just have it loose on the outside it basically looks like this here i've just taken the insides out of it okay and that's all we're doing we're just basically mirroring the image from here onto two outlets and we're just using wireless to get it onto here but it works really good and they advertise it as zero lag i think it's one millisecond of lag so it's absolutely tiny so the equipment you're going to need is a monitor i'm just using this one here i'm not saying this is the best monitor to use it says ips it's not an ips monitor this is an lcd monitor but that's it there you can get a usb one you can get a 12 volt one whatever you deem fit and we need uh, wireless hdmi this is the one here that I'm using and then basically we need a power bank at the back so if you have a look at the back here you can see that I've just stuck a power bank onto the back I've got two USBs coming out one's feeding the wireless HDMI that's built in there and the other's feeding the monitor itself again power bank is your choice the power bank there is a power core 13,000 or more expensive is this one here this does 12 volt output and also 5 volt as well for this so 12 volt can do the monitor and then 5 volt can do the wireless hdmi and the model number there is that one there okay so they're the links also you will need to get the joy cons to work these are the nintendo switch joy cons and i'm just using the magic ns adapter so if you want it on the pc you need one of these adapters here. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you it working on a Windows 10 game to begin with, then I'm gonna do a Steam game, and then I'm gonna go on to various other consoles as well, just to show you how it works. Okay, so here we have the Steam set up here, and remember we can take this within range of the Joy-Con controllers and within range of the wireless HDMI. So in my house now, I'm gonna show you it working later on up in the bedroom. But first of all, let me just show you it here, because a few of you might wanna see difference with the lag between the monitor up there and what's being displayed on the wireless HDMI here. Okay, so if you do a slow motion there, hopefully you'll be able to see what it's like. To me, it feels perfect. Right, let's go to library. Let's go to uh, Cuphead. Now remember, we can take this anywhere within range of the Joy-Cons and also the wireless HDMI as well.
So as you can see, it plays perfectly. Well, there you go. You can see it plays well. It's just me. That's no good. Right, let me show you a bit of Forza Motorsport 7 now on the actual Windows 10 game. Okay, so now we're upstairs in the bedroom. Okay, and you can see here the Windows 10 Xbox app. So let's do Forza Motorsport 7. Wondering how much this setup weighs with the anchor power bank is 900 grams, so that's two pounds. There we go, as you can see, it's working here now. Now, with the Joy Cons, they are digital, not analog, so they're not the best for racing games because the power's either all on or all off, and it's the same with the braking as well. Let's just change the view. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some other consoles working now. And as well as this, you might be wondering, you know, could you do this yourself? You could, obviously, but it's really expensive because of that wireless HDMI. It's currently £250. But in a couple of years, in two or three years, then this will become more feasible because the price of everything will move down to a more sensible price. And I think that maybe in two or three years, you'll be able to get the power bank monitor and the wireless HDMI for maybe around £150. So then it makes this more... A believable thing to do while at the moment realistically you're going to be paying nearly 400 pounds to get the same setup that I've got here I've done this purely because I'm going to use this in various different projects for the YouTube videos but you can see it looks nice anyway right let's move on and do some other consoles and if I attach this power bank to it this gives a rough estimate of the watts being used and can you see it's using about 10 watts so that's not too bad so for example that other power core 13,000 that you've seen is a 46 watt hour one so in theory 10 watts here you should be getting over four hours use out of this so here we have the Wii set up on it a bit of Super Smash Brothers Brawl and uh, to get the Joy-Cons to work we just need to plug it in via a Brook Converter and also a Magic NS Adapter. Right, let me show you a little bit of this playing on the settee. Okay, so that's the Wii. Let me now show you something else. Here we have the PS3. And to get this to work with the Joy-Con, you only need to have one Magic NS adapter, and that's it, and set to the blue mode. Let's show you a bit of Uncharted 3.
Right, let's set up another console. So here we have it set up with the Wii U. Now obviously with the Wii U we've already got a gamepad to play on, but we're limited to 480p. Doesn't matter what game it is, you're only going to get a maximum of 480p out of that. While with this setup here, you're going to get the resolution that you would get on your TV. So if the game allows 720p on the TV, then that's what you're going to get here. Now to get the Joy-Cons working on it, we have to use a Magic NS adapter set to blue mode, and then that will go into a Brook Wii U PS4 adapter like so. And that just syncs up to there, and then that passes the signal over to the Joy-Cons. Now let me show you a bit of gameplay. Okay, so this is Super Mario 3D World. Okay, let's move on. And this is the Wii U menu. You can see that the pointer's moving around when I use the analog stick, or you can just use the D-pad to scroll around like that. Okay, let's move on. So here we have the PS4 Pro connected up to this, and remember we don't have to have your TV or monitor on to be able to use the screen down here, because that splitter over there completely splits the signal, and it doesn't make a difference whether you have the other item on or off. Now to get the Joy-Cons to work we need a Cronus Max, no programming, just plug it in, and then we need a Magic NS adapter, but the problem is if we plug this straight into here, it's going to time out every 9 minutes, just for a second, but it will disconnect the controller, which is no good, so we have to put it via a USB hub, and then we have to use the original PS4 controller as a security feature. So we've got the Magic NS adapter into port 1 and then the PlayStation 4 controller into port 4. And I've just got it set on the green input for this. Let me show you a quick game. So this game is Nidhogg. There we go, and so I've got to the end now, so it means I've won that level. Right, let me show you the last console. And for this last part now, we're going to connect it up to a Nintendo Switch. Now that sort of might sound like madness, but the whole point is, instead of using it in handheld mode like this, we can dock this, and then we can have it on a 1080p 10-inch screen. So if you check this out now, once I plonk that in there, you will see that it will jump over onto this screen here. It will take a few seconds because of the wireless HDMI and everything going on. There we go, and now if you have a look at it, 1080p. Right. And what I've done is I've just swapped the Joy-Cons over to the blue and neon red just to make it look a bit more like a Nintendo Switch. Right, let me show you a bit of Mario Kart. And if you have a look at that, it just looks lovely on the biggest screen. And this particular game on the Nintendo Switch when it's docked is 1080p as well at 60 frames per second. Right, okay, I don't think I need to show you much more gameplay because you get the idea that it works well on numerous different systems. Basically anything with HDMI that you can manage to get the Joy-Cons to work on, it's going to work. So there we go, as you can see, an alternative way of streaming your games over onto here. So I've just made this up myself and obviously it didn't take a lot of time, but 
if a company was to do this, they could make this really good. They could have a nice flat battery built into the monitor. They could have the wireless HDMI built in, like I've done, you know, I've hidden it in the back. It could all be built in, and you could have decent controllers on the side as well. Obviously, I've just stuck these on the side with the Joy-Con rails, but you would be able to do a really good job if you had the money behind you to be able to do it. So, if any of you out there think about something to maybe a Kickstarter, then I think that there could be a market for something like this. So if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.